Greetings. Today is Sunday, July 14, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to talk about the high concentration of Saharan dust currently present in the tropical Atlantic, which is helping to prevent cyclonic formation. In fact, it is expected that for the rest of July, we will not see the formation of new cyclones in the area. So in this video, I will discuss why we are seeing these concentrations of Saharan dust, what effects it has on the hurricane season, and more importantly, how this influences the sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic. At the moment, in the tropical Atlantic, that is, between the Caribbean and Africa, we have the highest concentration of Saharan dust we have seen this year. The presence of Saharan dust causes some effects that are not favorable for cyclone formation. Firstly, the presence of Saharan dust creates a very dry atmosphere, which does not favor the formation of rain and low pressures. Therefore, it is not conducive to the formation of tropical cyclones. Additionally, this layer of Saharan dust reduces the amount of solar energy that reaches the ocean surface, and therefore can have a cooling effect on the waters because it blocks sunlight. Since this event has been quite extreme, we will soon be analyzing what effects it has had on temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone. This is very important because the forecast for a hyperactive season is largely based on the fact that temperatures in the main cyclonic development region are extremely high for this time of year. To put the current Saharan dust event into perspective, see in this graph that the current value far exceeds the average for this time of year. However, note that during June and July, climatologically, it is the peak of Saharan dust presence between the Caribbean and Africa. But during the first two weeks of July, we have seen extremely high values, despite the fact that in past months, the concentration of Saharan dust was quite low, and perhaps this event may create a false hope that the concentrations of Saharan dust will remain high in the coming months. Unfortunately, it is very likely that this is an isolated event, and historically, we have seen that during August and September, the presence of Saharan dust drops dramatically. It is very likely that we are currently seeing a peak in concentration that is indeed the highest we have recorded at least in the last two years. However, this event of high Saharan dust concentrations should be short-lived, and it is very likely that in the next two to three weeks, we will return to concentration values that are near or below normal. So, what has been causing this Saharan dust event? This is related to the fact that we currently have an unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation located over the Atlantic and over Western Africa. This phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation suppresses rainfall activity across the Atlantic and promotes stable air over the Atlantic and Africa. It has been found that it can help trigger events of high Saharan dust concentrations. So after several months where we were at below normal levels, it is very likely that the current phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation gave rise to these high concentrations of Saharan dust. In fact, it is very likely that the high concentrations of Saharan dust will continue, but by August, a transition to a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is expected, which should help reduce the amount of Saharan dust in the tropical Atlantic and create conditions that will again be favorable for the formation of tropical cyclones. What I mean is that this event is isolated and should not last more than two weeks. However, it is definitely good news that at least we have a break before the peak of the season, which is expected to be hyperactive, as indicated by all the forecasts from official agencies and expert meteorological groups. Another effect caused by Saharan dust is that it also limits the amount of radiation emitted by ocean surface temperatures. This can cause satellites that monitor ocean surface temperatures to register values below what the actual temperatures are in the Atlantic. And that is precisely what we can observe in this image, where during the past week, the satellite recorded that temperatures were dropping in the eastern Atlantic region when, in fact, temperatures have remained relatively constant during July in the main cyclonic development zone. What I mean is that temperature anomaly images are likely underestimating the actual temperature on the ocean surface because Saharan dust also limits the radiation detected by the satellite. This is why this graph can give a misleading idea that temperatures are dropping significantly in the main cyclonic development region and that they are currently near normal values. This is not the reality, and temperatures are warmer than what this temperature anomaly product is recording. You can even see that two days ago, it reported again that temperatures are warming when, in reality, what is happening is that the concentration of Saharan dust in some regions has dropped a bit, allowing the satellite to record the real temperatures on the ocean surface again. Although the Saharan dust has definitely helped at least to prevent temperatures from continuing to warm, we are still currently experiencing a tropical Atlantic with temperatures well above normal. In fact, this includes the main cyclonic development zone where most hurricanes form. However, one notable thing is that temperatures have cooled significantly near the Canary Islands and also in the Gulf of Guinea region where the Atlantic Nino phenomenon may be developing. These two areas of cooler-than-usual temperatures can have an effect on the hurricane season, which we will be discussing further later. But mainly, what I want you to see is that the temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone have not cooled much in the last few weeks. Rather, on average, they have maintained the temperature they had at the beginning of July. 
So, although the Saharan dust has not cooled the waters, at least it has prevented them from continuing to warm during the last two weeks. We can see this in the following graph, where from early June to the first half of July, temperatures have remained relatively constant in the main cyclonic development zone. The blue line in this graph represents the average sea surface temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone. This has helped the current average sea surface temperature in the main cyclonic development zone to be slightly below what we had in 2023, yet it remains the second warmest year since 1991 and is very close to what we recorded in 2023. In fact, note that on average, temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone are at the maximum values typically reached during the months of September and October. Unfortunately, we know that in the coming months, temperatures will continue to rise, perhaps not as high as in 2023 but still much higher than normal which would favor cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. However, there is some variation in the distribution of these temperature anomalies. First, note that in the region between the Caribbean and Africa, temperatures are much warmer than normal but not as high as in 2023. However, when we look at the Caribbean Sea region, temperatures are at record values above what has been recorded since 1991 and well above what was recorded in 2023. So the distribution of temperature anomalies is higher in the Caribbean region and a bit lower in the tropical Atlantic region. This could favor cyclones forming and strengthening a bit more to the west and closer to the Caribbean region, which would definitely not be good news for the peak of the season. We can clearly see this in the next image, where the orange or reddish colors represent temperatures that already exceed the maximum typically reached during September and October. Note that this precisely occurs west of longitude 45 degrees west. What this means is that the region just east of the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean Sea currently has temperatures above the maximum typically reached during the months of September and October. As I show in this image, you can see that temperatures typically continue to warm towards September and October. So, unfortunately, temperatures will continue to rise despite the stagnation we have seen in recent weeks, thanks to the presence of Saharan dust. Another very important factor is that these images only present the sea surface temperatures. However, if we look at the profile at ocean depths, you can see that the region to the east of the Lesser Antilles, or to the west of longitude 45 degrees west, the temperatures are very warm down to depths between 70 to 90 meters. This means that although Saharan dust can cool the waters a bit, the reality is that temperatures are very warm, not only on the surface but also at depths, which means that any surface cooling would be temporary because the warm waters will reappear on the surface. However, do note that in the eastern Atlantic, or near the Cape Verde Islands, the warm temperatures are not at such deep levels. So, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the cooling of the waters between the Canary Islands and the Cape Verde Islands will probably have a limiting effect on the tropical waves coming from Africa, but only for the first few days as they move west because eventually, when they reach the region east of the Lesser Antilles and west of longitude 40 degrees west, they will encounter very warm temperatures that will aid cyclonic formation. And worse yet, when these tropical waves reach the Caribbean Sea region, note that the temperatures are at record values for this time and also at great depths in the Caribbean Sea. So it will be very difficult for the Caribbean Sea region to see cooling of the waters in the coming months. The presence of warm waters at ocean depths can also be analyzed as the heat content, where in the main cyclonic development zone it is at record levels well above what we had in 2023 and well above the average of the last 10 years. In fact, the ocean heat content is currently near the peak typically reached during the month of October. In a way, this heat content is mostly in the Caribbean region, as the tropical Atlantic region is at values closer to what we had in 2023, but still at record levels for this time. The situation is worse in the Caribbean Sea region, where we are at an extremely high value, far above what was recorded last year. This heat content helps the rapid formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones, as we saw with Hurricane Barrel at the beginning of July. In fact, you can see that during the first week of July, Hurricane Barrel did reduce the heat content in the Caribbean a bit. However, in the last few days, it has started to increase again, because the temperatures are also warm at depths. So unfortunately, it will continue to rise until it reaches its peak in October. Furthermore, if we analyze the projections of the best models, you can see that all of them are forecasting that the main cyclonic development zone will continue with warmer than usual temperatures in the coming months, and specifically during the peak of the season. What I mean is that although the Saharan dust has kept temperatures constant in recent weeks, very likely once the unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation leaves the Atlantic, temperatures will continue to warm until the peak of the season. The current presence of Saharan dust has helped us, but it will probably be temporary during July. 
by August, September and October, conditions should become much more favorable for us to see cyclonic activity again. Also, remember that we have neutral ENSO conditions in the Pacific. It is very likely that La Nina will develop in the coming months, with up to a 99% chance that we will have La Nina or neutral conditions during August, September and October. This, combined with sea surface temperatures that are above normal and very close to the historical record, will cause favorable conditions for a hyperactive season. The only change we have and can analyze compared to what we had in May is that the cooler temperatures west of Africa and over the Gulf of Guinea will probably cause cyclonic activity to focus more westward towards the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the southeastern United States. This could represent a greater risk for land areas. And although historically this can help reduce cyclonic activity, the very warm temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone should counteract this effect. However, it is likely that cyclones will then form a bit further west, just east of the Lesser Antilles, in the Caribbean Sea, and in the Gulf of Mexico. This is mainly due to the high probability that we will have the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific. Well, that's all for this video. In the coming days, I will record another video to talk about the changes we anticipate in August with the arrival of a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation. The peak of the season promises to be hyperactive. So enjoy the calm cyclonic activity we will have in July, as it is temporary and the peak of the season will be very active. Well, now I say goodbye. Until the next video.